I know that yesterday you were very strong day. Yeah. We are Italian. So Italian press? Italian press, yeah. Okay. Italian You're with um, Matera? Matera. Yeah, I've been to that town. It's a little town near Bari, Puglia. Yes, near yeah. Bari. My European director, Angelo Consoli, is yes, from Yes, I, I know okay. that you have a project with the University of Bari and lecture. Sure. Yes. I prepared some questions Go ahead. for you, and if you need, I send this question via email. I won't have time on email, so just do it now. <laughs> okay, okay. Just a moment. Hi, Mr. Rifkin. You speak from many years of hydrogen technologies and market perspectives that open in use of hydrogen energy. When we start to get serious? Well, we're serious now, and the reason is we're beginning to introduce distributed renewable energies all over Europe, all over the world. That means we have to have a way to store those energies. So now it's getting serious. In, as you know, there are five pillars of the third industrial revolution. One, renewable energies. Two, convert all the buildings to power plants, we produce our own energy. Three, store that energy in the form of hydrogen, like you store media and digital. Pillar four, put in an energy internet across Europe so that we can share our energy and sell it to each other. And pillar five, plug it into electric vehicles, the whole infrastructure, and fuel cell vehicles. The feed-in tariffs in Italy, Germany, around Europe have been successful. We have many, many buildings now or sites that are trying to, that are collecting green energy. But without hydrogen storage, we're losing three out of four kilowatts. Because the wind is blowing at night, you need the electricity during the day. Or like in Sicily last week, I understand there was a solar surge, plenty of sun, and the price of electricity went to zero during the day, and then at night, it went back up. In order to manage these intermittent energies, solar, wind, hydro, they're intermittent, you have to have a way to store them in order to manage an energy internet. Otherwise, you have peaks, you have lulls, you have surges, you have brownouts, and you're losing three out of four kilowatts. So now is the time for storage, hydrogen. Second question is this. Energy production, photovoltaic and wind, may be realized in a small power system. There are also systems for processing and storage this energy in the form of hydrogen through electrolysis. It is no time that every family has a small central yeah. production sure. and storage hydrogen-based energy technology. Absolutely. Hydrogen stores renewable energy the way media is stored in digital. If you want to store media, it's in digital. If you want to store renewable energy, it's in hydrogen. I was this evening, last night, with Daryl Wilson, who was the head of hydrogenics, the largest electrolyzer. He's an old friend. He was a student yes. of mine at Wharton years and years ago. He's one of my students. They're ready. They've got, and Ballard, all these companies are ready, hydrogenics. And you're right. We need to create something like a feed-in tariff, like we've done with green energy, for hydrogen storage, so that early adopters with a feed-in tariff can be a, or some other device or some other credit or incentive can put electrolyzers in every home, every office, every small and medium-sized enterprise, et cetera. Absolutely. Okay. Third is this. We have only five questions. <laughs> also reforming, extracting hydrogen from natural gas may be used in all cases where the pipes carry and gas natural natural gas to individual dwellings, the benefit would be huge the reduced pollution. 
Well, let me let me say that although natural gas is cleaner than coal and oil, it still emits CO2. Now, as you know, a lot of the hydrogen we create today is extracted from natural gas, especially for uh, uh, uses in industry. The problem is we are now uh, facing dramatic climate change now. A new study came out last week. It's terrifying. And what we now have learned from our scientists in the Arctic this year, we reached the threshold of, uh, this year of 400 parts carbon per million in the Arctic. It's terrifying. I can't explain how terrifying this is. We are at 400 parts carbon per million right now, the newest scientific reports in the Arctic and the North. <laughs> Any amount of carbon we emit now is too much. I, we are at a precipice for the species. Our human race is now threatened with potential die-out. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt in the next in the next 50 years now. We have our chief climatologist in the U.S. government is James Hansen. He's the head of the National NOAA, uh, the National um, Oceanic uh, Space Institute. He says if you go over 350 parts per million. I don't know. We've never been over 250 parts per million for a million years. In the industrial age, we moved to 300, then 350. Now we're at 400. And the EU, which I advise, wants to set the goal at stopping at 450 parts per million. And no one even wants to do that. But what James Hansen says is if we go to 450 parts per million, we're almost there. We don't go up two degrees. We go up six degrees and the end of human civilization. What do people need? What does the human race need to get this right? We've got to move off fossil fuels. That includes natural gas, too, and we've got to get off. Off, off, off. Okay? It makes no sense to use natural gas when we can go to renewable energy, and it's everywhere. Why, why the hell are we sticking on natural gas where every building has the opportunity to collect enough green renewable energy and share it? We don't need any of these fossil fuels. Okay, last question or two last? Other two. This is another uh, other file. Okay. The word monetary system without uh, an objective connection between the face value of currencies and the real consideration, the real value, it is at, is, is at mercy of speculation and governance. Should we not think of a currency convertible into hydrogen? Like years ago, there was convertible into gold. All in all, it's the energy, the only thing we care about owning, and hydrogen in part. Right. Is the subject more easily and more efficiently converted into energy? Well, first of all, the difference between gold and hydrogen is hydrogen is ubiquitous. Gold is scarce. So you wouldn't base currency based on hydrogen because it's everywhere. It's what the whole universe is made of. So I, that, that I don't understand. Uh, but I, I do understand the point you're making that our currency is not based on the, on the real commercial implications of everything we make and exchange. Yes. It's only based on the value at the moment. But it doesn't take into consideration the entropic consequences and our inde indebtedness to nature and future generations. So the currency does not have a, a sweep of history. It's only a moment. So it's undervalued in terms of the real cost of what something is. Yes. We undervalue it. So, in the book, Third Industrial Revolution, I have a whole chapter called Retiring Adam Smith. And it says we have to rethink economics based on the laws of thermodynamics. And if we do, we can begin to rethink the value and the cost of what we do. Because everything we do puts us in debt to nature. Now, GDP is not a measure of wealth. It's a measure of our debt, what we owe to nature. Okay, one last one? Yes, yes but, but we think that uh, if we uh, have energetic value of hydrogen, 
such as when I have one dollar or one euro, I can convert this in a, a kilogram of bread or in a, two oranges, maybe. Uh, but there isn't a relation from the, the chart with the uh, oranges. I don't have any thoughts on that. I'm sorry. <laughs> if I did, I would share them. <laughs> The, the last question is this. You, you were the first that they was spoken to the world of the hydrogen economy. No, there's, there were others before. Yeah. But you are the, 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 yeah. the, the most famous, yes, okay, <laughs> in this, for your uh, first book about. Will you be first to point this decisive step to start the era of hydrogen? You are an economist. Do you share the idea that linking the currency to hydrogen is the most concrete and immediate way? No, I'm just telling you again, I have no other I have no thoughts, so don't quote me. I have no thoughts on currency to hydrogen. I, so do not quote me on it. Or, or I know you're trying to get me to say this. No, no. But I'm this is not a question I want to address. I'm I don't I don't have, I don't have any interest in addressing hydrogen as currency. Hydrogen as currency. No. Okay. Okay. So is, uh, drop it up. Okay. Yes. May have uh, a photo. May we Absolutely. have a photo? We do Absolutely. with our uh, jackets. One is for you. You want my jacket on? No, no. <laughs> our jackets. We have a shirt. Is a present for you. Oh. For our organization. All right. Okay. From okay. Our account. <laughs> is everybody here from Puglia? Puglia and Campania. Naples. Campania. Naples. Oh, Naples. Naples. Oh, Naples. 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 Okay. But what do we have? Light oh, green. Oh, isn't that nice? That's very nice. Ah, light green. I love it. That's great. Thank you. All right, you want me to? Yes. And what is this? This is part of a uh, NGO. Is a group of companies that work only with the uh, green economy on the green energy. Okay. A growth is not a company. It's just a consortium, consortium of economy. Okay, here's what we're going to do. You guys put on a t-shirt. I don't want. I, I can't you hold it up. sponsor any company. Yeah. Oh. You put on a t-shirt to take a photo of me. Yes. Yes. Follow me. Yes. I can't put on a t-shirt. Yes. Yes. I'll take it. All right. Commercially, I can't do that. So you put them on, and then I'll do it. All right. Yeah, exactly. Very good. Bye, bye, bye. Okay. Nice to meet all you. I see you again with Tom. Good luck with all of your work. Okay. If you guys want to come down soon, we'll be doing